Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about leukemia, specifically how the different types of leukemia are classified. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's get into learning about leukemias. First, let's go over the goals of today's lesson. We're gonna talk about what is leukemia? What do we mean by this term? We're gonna go over an overview of hematopoiesis. And this is essentially describing how the blood cells develop from a common precursor. Next, we'll go over how we classify these different leukemias into different types specifically into myeloid versus lymphoid types and acute versus chronic type. And lastly, we'll go over some special types of leukemias. So first, what is leukemia? So leukemia is a malignant transformation of blood cell precursors. And what we mean by this is malignant uh, because it's a blood cancer and there is essentially an unregulated a multiplication of immature blood cells uh, that causes a lot of issues. So for example, these malignant cells replace and disrupt the normal healthy blood cells, uh, causing a lot of the symptoms that we see in leukemia. And leukemia is caused by gene mutations or chromosomal translocations. Uh, this is what I mean by chromosomal translocation. So chromosomal translocation is also a type of mutation, but what happens is there are two different segments of DNA on two different chromosomes, and they get swapped. And sometimes when they swap, uh, there are certain pieces of the DNA that get put next to each other, creating a fusion gene. Uh, this is an example of one, the BCR able gene. And this in itself is a mutation uh, that can cause a lot of the issues in leukemia. So hematopoiesis, this is a fancy term that we're using to describe uh, the development of blood cells. You can kind of think of it as like the blood cell family tree in a kind of way. So all blood cells start out as this multipotential hematopoietic stem cell. So this is a blood cell uh, stem cell that can develop into many different kinds. And now here is a key branch point. We, this stem cell can become either a myeloid progenitor cell or a lymphoid progenitor cell. So myeloid versus lymphoid lineage. Uh, and this is important because this is one key classification difference of the leukemias. Within the myeloid side of the family tree, uh, this can further develop into megakaryocytes, which result in our thrombocytes or platelets. It can develop into erythrocytes, which are our red blood cells, uh, mast cells, uh, myeloblasts, and this myeloblast can further divide into basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes. Uh, so these are some different types of white blood cells. Now, on the other side of the tree, we have the lymphoid uh, lineage. So this can uh, divide into either a natural killer cell or these small lymphocytes. And these lymphocytes further uh, become either a T lymphocyte or B lymphocyte. Uh, and as we'll see later, that's important because that impacts how we classify the lymphoid leukemias. So blood cell family tree. So we covered uh, that, the blood cell family tree. And like we said, the myeloid versus lymphoid lineage is an important distinction because these are two different types of leukemias. So we classify leukemia as either myeloid versus lymphoid. And then on top of that classification, we classify these as either acute or chronic. So acute if the symptoms develop uh, really rapidly, very become very severe quite quickly, uh, or chronic if it's more of a slow, slowly developing indolent course, a bit milder symptoms. Uh, that's what we refer to as the chronic type. Now, specifically within the lymphoid types, like we saw here, these lymphocytes can become T or B lymphocytes. So similarly, in our classification of leukemia, the lymphoid leukemias, both the acute and chronic type, 
can be classified as B cell type or T cell type. All right, so now we know what is leukemia. We understand how blood cells develop, the hematopoiesis, and we have a framework for how we classify the different types of leukemias. Now we'll get into the specific subtypes. So we're gonna start by talking about the acute leukemias, the ones that develop rapidly uh, more severe symptoms. And specifically, we'll start focusing on the acute myeloid leukemias, sometimes abbreviated AML. So that's gonna be this side of the blood cell family tree. So AML primarily occurs in adults. The median age of diagnosis is 65. Uh, and on bone marrow biopsy, it's going to be characterized by myeloblasts comprising more than 20% of all the cells uh, that you take out. The symptoms are going to result mainly from bone marrow suppression. So we have all these immature myeloblasts packed into the bone marrow, and it's suppressing the normal healthy ones. And that's going to result in some of the symptoms that you see like anemia, so fatigue and tiredness because of suppression of red blood cell production, thrombocytopenia, um, suppression of the platelets causes symptoms like bleeding, uh, and then neutropenia, suppression of the white blood cell production results in increased risk for infections. And some characteristics of AML are that the cells will be positive for myeloperoxidase, a uh, certain enzyme, a certain stain that can be used. And we will see our rods uh, within the cells on a blood smear. So we'll see that in a second. And lastly, AML, you should know, is the most aggressive type of leukemia that we're going to be discussing. So here's a picture of a myeloblast. And then this little rod right here, that is what is called an hour rod. So if you see a blood smear with this, uh, you should be thinking AML. There's a specific subtype of AML called acute promyelocytic leukemia, uh, APML. And this is caused by a translocation between chromosomes 15 and 17. So remember, those are two segments uh, on two different chromosomes. They get swapped, and you create a new fusion gene, a uh, new mutated gene. And specifically, the gene that's created here is the PMLRARA. Uh, and this is essentially a mutated vitamin A receptor. It's important to know about this subtype because there is a very effective treatment called all trans retinoic acid. Essentially, this is your vitamin A that you're giving. And it's very effective and allows you to avoid the use of more intense chemotherapies. The other reason it's important to know about this subtype is that you have a high risk for disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, uh, because of the high levels of myeloperoxidase in these promyelocytes. So what is DIC? DIC is a rare, very serious condition that happens when you get blood clots within your vessels uh, and you use up all your clotting factors, you use up all the platelets. Uh, so you have the risk associated with clotting. But because you're using up all the platelets and clotting factors, you're also at risk for bleeding. Uh, and things like brain bleeds. So it's very serious. It can be life-threatening. Uh, but in APML, we have this effective treatment, all transretinoic acid. So those are the key, key things to know about APML. Another condition I want to talk about is called myelodysplastic syndrome, abbreviated MDS. So this is similar to AML in that you have abnormal myeloid progenitor cells. But the difference here is that you have less than 20% blasts on the bone marrow biopsy. So in AML, you have more than 20%, but MDS, you have less than 20%. So it is its own condition, but it may progress to AML over time. So you can kind of think of myelodysplastic syndrome and AML on this spectrum, where MDS uh, consists of less than 20% blasts of all the cells, and AML has more than 20%. All right, we covered all of the acute myeloid leukemias. Now we're going to go to that other side of the blood cell family tree, still focusing on the acute types, but this is now the lymphoid uh, type. So, some this so the term lymphoblastic and lymphoid those are synonymous, so I'll use them interchangeably. 
but ALL. What should you know about this? This primarily occurs in children, as opposed to AML, which occurs primarily in adults. And on the bo bone marrow biopsy, you'll see primarily lymphoblasts. And the symptoms here are resulting from bone marrow expansion. So in AML, you have the bone marrow suppression. Kind of think of you're putting uh, breaks on the uh, factory. You're shutting it down. And so you have low levels of all these blood cell types. In ALL, kind of think of the factory going into overdrive. So you, you're not able to produce as much cells within the bone marrow. So these factories go to these satellite locations where they can produce blood cells, uh, like the lymph nodes, spleen, and liver. So because things are in overdrive here, you get these symptoms like fever, bone pain, uh, and enlargement of these satellite sites. So enlargement of the lymph nodes, enlargement of the spleen, enlargement of the liver. Uh, this is sort of simplification of things, uh, in reality, there is a lot of overlap. Uh, you can see these symptoms of both AML and ALL, but this is sort of to give you a broad overview to help distinguish these two conditions in your mind and form this framework. All right. Now, you remember the lymphocytes can further develop into B cells or T cells, and therefore we further classify the lymphoid leukemias into B cell type or T cell type. So B cell uh, type is the most common form of ALL. Uh, it's characterized by translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22 and 12 and 21. And it's characterized by the cells having these B cell markers, specifically these CD markers. So CD stands for cluster of differentiation. And these are basically just like little proteins like that are on the outside of the cell that signal what sort of interactions the cell can have with other cells. And the B cell markers are going to be characterized by like double digit numbers. So ranging from like CD10 up to like 23 or so. T cell ALL mainly occurs in adolescent males and is often characterized by presence of a mass, most commonly in the mediastinum, so in the middle of the chest, but sometimes in the lymph nodes. And T cell ALL is going to be characterized by T cell markers. And as opposed to the B cell markers, which are like double digit numbers, the T cell markers are single digits. So like CD one through eight. All right, we covered the acute leukemias, both the myeloid and the lymphoid types. Now we're gonna move on to the chronic types, the ones that develop more slowly over time. Again, now we're gonna start with the myeloid leukemias, chronic myeloid leukemia, abbreviated CML. So CML occurs mainly in adults, median age of diagnosis is age 50. Uh, it's characterized by increased proliferation of the myeloid progenitor cells. And the hallmark of this condition is something called the Philadelphia chromosome. So this is a translocation between chromosome 9 and 22, and it creates the bcr able fusion gene. Uh, so what this creates, it's a specific tyrosine kinase uh, that's mutated um, and it's operating without regulation and contributes to the abnormal, pro abnormal proliferation of the blood cells we see in CML. Now, on the lymphoblastic, the lymphoid side, CLL, this mainly occurs in older adults, median age of diagnosis around 70, characterized by the proliferation of lymphocytes. And the vast majority of this type are the B cell subtype, uh, as opposed to T cell subtype. Uh, more than 95% of CLL cases are B cell type. But the unique thing in this scenario is that T cells actually will have both B and T cell markers. So if you remember the T cell markers were like the single digits, uh, so CD5 is typically a T cell marker. But in CLL, these cells have that CD5. Uh, in addition to traditional B cell markers like CD19, 20, 23. So if you see the combination of those markers, uh, that could indicate CLL. And lastly, on the blood smear, it's going to be characterized by something called a smudge cell. So this is a lymphocyte smudge cell that you would see in CLL. Look, it's basically like 
someone took the blood cell, put it on the slide, and then smeared it across, like smudged it. You can see like this smearing here. So if you see that, that's suggested of CLL. Now, lastly, there's a special type of CLL called hairy cell leukemia. Uh, so this is a chronic B cell malignancy. Uh, and it's characterized by lymphocytes with hairy cytoplasmic projections. So this is a picture of that. So the cytoplasm is what the different components of the cell uh, are sort of nested in within this cell. That's uh, so just the blue that you see here. And you see these kind of hairy projections uh, poking off from the borders. That's a hairy cell. And so what can happen sometimes is these hairy cells kind of interlock with each other and cause fibrosis within the bone marrow because they're all like interlocked together. And you can recognize that when you go to try to do a bone marrow biopsy, you'll get what's called a dry tap. So nothing will come out, it'll be all dry. And that's because all this fibrosis from the interlocked hairy cells, you know, it takes up all the space and you no longer have any of that bone marrow juice uh, to draw out. And lastly, pretty much all cases of hairy cell leukemia are characterized by this BRAF mutation. All right, that was a whirlwind of information about leukemias, but let's summarize what we learned. We learned that leukemia is a blood cancer caused by abnormal proliferation of blood cell precursors. We learned that blood cells come from either the myeloid or lymphoid lineage. That's the key branch point within the blood cell family tree. We learned that leukemias are classified as either myeloid or lymphoid type. And in addition to that, they're also classified as either acute or chronic type. So that gives us four big classifications of leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia, AML, occurs primarily in adults, characterized by symptoms of bone marrow suppression, and is the most aggressive type. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, occurs primarily in children, and characterized by symptoms of bone marrow expansion. On the chronic side, we have chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, occurs primarily in adults and is characterized by the Philadelphia chromosome. And then lastly, we have chronic lymphoblastic leukemia, CLL, characterized by older adults and the presence of smudge cells. The lymphoid leukemias are further classified into B cell and T cell types. And lastly, we learned about some special types of leukemias, acute promyelocytic leukemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, and hairy cell leukemia. All right, everyone, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.